By hacking into an internal cash system of a bank, attackers would be able to then activate any ATM of the bank to make withdrawals, essentially creating an infinite money glitch for themselves without even leaving not one single fingerprint on an ATM. An ATM is usually comprised of two separate parts. You have the lower part and the interface with the computer. The lower part is heavily protected and contains the cash for withdrawals from the machine. You could call it the safety vault of the ATM. The top part contains many components, such as a printer for receipts, a camera, speaker, display, and computer that controls the ATM. This computer is directly connected to the cash dispenser, meaning if criminals were to hack into this computer, they could essentially gain control over the ATM. However, unlike the cash dispenser, the computer portion of ATMs isn't as secure, even though it's just as important. This is a major security concern as criminals can easily gain access either by one, breaking the exterior, or two, simply just buying a universal key for the specific ATM machines. Once the ATM is open, the hackers can then place in their own devices, which will activate malware within the ATM, which then can be used to collect data. Now, even though that's crazy enough, what we are about to discuss in today's video will leave you speechless. The cherry on top is no personal information is needed, no credit or debit card has to be inserted into the machine, no personal information required. And all of this may seem, you know, pretty cool, but is it really worth the risk? Is it really worth the hassle of hacking into an ATM? There is a reason why people have exploded, demolished, or straight up stolen entire ATMs. Some people have even went as far as using an excavator to remove an ATM from a structure in a wall. On July 16th, 2023, Vermont State Police issued an alert, letting their community know that someone used an excavator to break through a wall to steal an ATM out of a Vermont store. Same thing happened in England where two members of a criminal organization used heavy machinery to remove ATM machines from kiosks, causing extensive damage to businesses. Thieves in Northern Ireland also acted on the idea of taking smash and grabs to a whole new level in a recent slew of brazen robberies, taking ATMs that are built into exterior walls out of shops. And the reason why so many people have taken extreme measures to steal these machines is because most ATMs can contain anywhere between $50,000 to $250,000. This makes ATM machines very attractive to not only criminals, but also hacking enthusiasts such as Barnaby Jack, a New Zealand hacker. After his presentation where he essentially hacked into an ATM at Black Hat 2010, he became a legend within the hacking community, if you will. Hackers and even cybersecurity experts were blown away from his presentation. However, there was one certain particular group of people who were not so fond. They viewed this information he was sharing as a very serious problem. Because banks and other financial institutions were now at risk of being robbed at any moment at any one of their ATMs anonymously. So with that being said, obviously banks and financial institutions had a very big problem with this information being spread because if, if information on how to jackpot ATMs were to spread, hackers from all around the world would try to get in on the action, possibly even improving on Barnaby's methods to steal money from financial institutions blindly, anonymously, without a trace, which unfortunately is exactly what ended up happening. Back in 2013, only two years after Barney B. Jack's presentation, the first large-scale attack was reported in Mexico. In a truly massive operation, a group of hackers compromised over 450 ATMs from four of the largest Mexican banks, stealing over $40 million in the matter of days. The banks noticed that their ATMs were almost empty only a few hours after they had been filled, and they thought that their delivery drivers may have been stealing money from them. However, upon further investigation, they realized that all of their ATMs with these abnormal cash movements had been infected with software named Plotus Made in Latin America XD. Plotus was the first of its kind, and in basic terms, it was essentially designed to infiltrate uh, and gain total control, total access over computers that were running on software made by Cal, because Cal is one of the leading companies in regards to ATM software. Just as Barnaby Jack had discussed in his presentation, hackers would use universal keys to access these ATMs, then connecting a device that would introduce the malware, and then use a keyboard which would then be able to control and order the machine to make withdrawals. This was the first time that anyone had publicly, you know, jackpotted an ATM for a large sum of money. And as you could probably tell, the news spread like a wildfire, starting what many referred to as 
the Plotus wave. Cyber criminals from all across the world began using the Plotus malware to steal money from ATMs with banks allegedly losing two to three billion dollars over the next 12 months. And to make things worse, people started selling this malware through the dark web and even instructions on how to use it properly, which meant anyone could get their hands on it. And you may wonder to yourself, you know, why don't the banks just update their cash machines? And to answer your question, they did multiple times. But one thing that you have to understand is that with security updates, especially on cash machines like ATMs, it's only a temporary solution. After every security update, the banks would be saved for a couple weeks, maybe a month if they were lucky, until a new and improved version of the Plotus malware was created and released and then sold on the dark web. And what makes this process even easier for criminals is that many ATMs today are very, very old, still running on Windows XP which is extremely outdated and unsecured. As word spread about the Plotus malware making its way to Europe and Asia, with an improved version being released not too long afterwards being called Plotus D, first appearing in the USA back in 2018. Plotus was becoming a real life nightmare for banks and financial institutions from all across the world, but the worst was yet to come. As banks scrambled to secure their systems, another much more complex malware appeared. In 2019, the anti-cybercrime company Conspiracy Labs discovered a mysterious group of hackers that had created a new malware. With this new software, they were able to infiltrate the internal systems of dozens of banks in Europe, Russia, and China. The banks contacted Conspiracy Labs because they had people stealing money from their ATMs without even ever touching them. Upon investigation, Conspiracy Labs found out that this had been going on for much longer than what they had initially anticipated. And in this case, the hackers had been deleting security footage and transaction details for over half a year, right? Stealing millions of dollars in the process without anyone noticing. But this time it wasn't the Plotus malware, it wasn't credit card fraud, no, it was something much, much worse. Something nobody had ever even seen before. It was a hack that was so sophisticated, cybersecurity experts began to think it must have been part of some military operation, some type of military intelligence operation that was targeting um, the economies of certain countries. But no, it wasn't. And cybersecurity experts ended up naming this software Carbonac. It was untraceable. It was undetectable, even to conventional security systems. It was so powerful that in fact, big banks and even intelligence agencies from around the world had to come together and team up to try to come up with a solution. And this time they had created a much, much more complex, much more sophisticated uh, version. Now to put it into simple terms, the Plotus malware was essentially a type of software that was specifically designed to infiltrate and disrupt and disturb, gain unauthorized access into a bank's um, ATM computer system, right? It's ATM malware that was designed specifically to allow attackers to gain unauthorized access and gain control over ATMs, bypassing security uh, protocols, security measures, to be able to steal large amounts of money without ever even having to lay a single finger on an ATM. And this malicious software or malware, as I really should say, you know, it's, it's the most sophisticated, it's the most advanced ATM malware that is currently in circulation right now here today in 2023, as big banks are still struggling every single day to try to find a solution, come up with a solution to completely eradicate the software, put it into it. But you know, the road, it's going to be a long road ahead, unfortunately.